Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. A loose tire is to blame for a deadly crash on northbound I-75 at the Davison Freeway that killed a driver. A 63-year-old man from Clarkston was taken to the hospital, but that is where he later died. It tops our news tonight at 11. I'm Devin Skillian. I'm Kimberly Gill. It happened this afternoon in the northbound lanes of the freeway at the Davison. Jacqueline Francis is live. Jacqueline, investigators trying to find out how that tire got loose. Yeah, Kimberly and Devin, this here is the stretch of 75 that was tied up for hours today because of the crash. We're learning that a tire came loose from a car, flew over the median wall and struck a pickup truck. You can see those orange marks there. That's where it happened. This was the view from Sky 4 over northbound I-75 at Davison Freeway. That white pickup truck's roof caved in, crushed by a flying tire. Michigan State Police tell us a southbound car lost its tire and it went over the median wall and struck the pickup's windshield. When first responders arrived on scene around 430, they found the truck up against the wall and the driver unconscious. Troopers broke the window to gain access, but were unsuccessful. They then used a chain to pull the truck away from the median and removed the driver. The 63-year-old Clarkston man was taken to the hospital where he later died from his injuries. The 34-year-old driver of the other vehicle that lost its tire is cooperating with the investigation. The freeway reopened around 6.30 this evening. The investigation is ongoing and we're told once complete, it'll be sent to the prosecutor's office for review. Reporting live from 75 Davison, Jacqueline Francis, Local 4. So cool. Okay, Jacqueline, thank you. New tonight, one man is dead after a shooting in East Point. It happened at a home on Stricker Avenue near East 8 Mile. Police say the victim's nephew came into the police station and told officers his uncle was possibly murdered. Officers went to the home and found a 48-year-old man shot to death. They were able to locate the suspect and take him into custody. Charges are pending. New developments tonight in the ongoing investigation in the Dearborn Heights School District. Popular Annapolis High School principal Aaron Mullett has once again been placed on leave, a move that's part of the school board's vote to reinstate him until the end of the school year. It's unclear what school officials are investigating Mullett for, as it has been since the start. Meanwhile, the district superintendent remains on leave after the teachers' union revolted and a number of Title IX complaints were filed against him. Also new tonight, the Detroit bus driver charged with killing a Gross Point woman is off the job. The Detroit News reports 59-year-old Geraldine Johnson has been fired by DDOT. Johnson is accused of hitting and killing a woman in downtown Detroit while she was behind the wheel of a DDOT bus. Prosecutors say Johnson has been in seven crashes since 2018, and those involve both a bus and her personal car. Johnson pleaded not guilty to a misdemeanor. She's been placed on house arrest after a judge lowered her bond. Legal drama between the city of Detroit and Marvin Winans unfinished perfecting church is over for now. The city and church coming to terms to get some movement on finishing the property which has been under construction for the last 18 years. Mara McDonald live on Detroit's northwest side with more. Mara. Hi, Devin. You know, complaints were steadily coming in about this property. People who live here or driving by saw this church, saw no movement here, and thought it was becoming essentially a dilapidated eyesore. Well, the city of Detroit took perfecting church to court to try and make something happen here. And tonight, there's a deal. The city of Detroit sold the land the unfinished church sits on to Pastor Marvin Winans back in 04. The dream was to have a mega church on the property. Slowly but surely, construction started building what you currently see on the site, but then it just sort of stopped eight years ago and complaints to the city started piling up, calling it an eyesore and a danger. Tonight, after Detroit and the church have come to terms, Perfecting Church has until the end of the month to submit a building status report. It has until the end of July to apply for zoning approvals. City Corporation Council Conrad Mallett saying tonight the agreement includes specific commitments from Perfecting Church to the city of Detroit regarding the timeline for construction, permitting, and financing. Back here live talking about that financing, which is a key component here in the deal that was agreed to after the church meets all its, uh, you know, uh, benchmarks that it has to with the city about 
you know, what's the status of the building, getting the permitting, getting this, getting that. The final thing after they get all their permits is going to be financing. And the church will have 90 days to show the city of Detroit that it's got it. We're live on Detroit's North Side. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. What a long road it's been. All right, Mara. Two people are hospitalized after a shooting in the city of Manistee today. As of tonight, police are still working to find a motive. Around 1230 this afternoon, police were responding to reports of a shooting and found a 36-year-old man from Traverse City shot in the stomach. He's in the hospital listed in critical condition. Police say witnesses reported the suspect ran off with two other people. An hour later, officers found a 19-year-old with two gunshot wounds. He is in stable condition. At this time, investigators believe the injuries sustained by both subjects were from an initial incident on 5th Street and, and there was no second shooting incident. Police say both victims knew each other and there is no threat to the public. It's unclear what led to that shooting. <clears throat> now to a story we have been following all week. Two teenagers facing charges after police say they tried to rob a Detroit police officer. 16 year old Dwayne Whitley and 17 year old Marlon Henderson are being charged as adults in the case. This is a video of the attack that happened back on June 10th at the BP, uh, the gas station at Joy Road in the Southfield Freeway. You see one person reaching for the officer's gun. That starts a wrestling match with the officer. Both teens turned themselves into police on Monday. They face a number of charges, including armed robbery. Hundreds are expected to take part tomorrow in the 16th annual Silence the Violence Memorial March. It's being held at the Church of Messiah on East Grand Boulevard. On, that's on Detroit's east side, of course. The march honors the innocent victims of gun violence and works with people and organizations working on gun violence eradication. Emmy Award winner Orlando Bailey is expected to be there to moderate the event. The march is a mile and a half long. It starts and ends at the church beginning at 11 a.m. Cleanup continues tonight for people in Monroe County following yesterday's storms, which has been confirmed now to have been a tornado. Fast moving storms brought golf ball sized hail and an EF1 tornado. The National Weather Service was able to confirm today. The tornado was on the ground north of Monroe for close to five miles bringing winds of about 90 miles an hour with it. Tonight, residents in Frenchtown Township describing the damage that was left behind. Me and my dad were watching the trees fall outside and we heard a big bang and turned around and there was an entire branch through the ceiling. The neighbor right there, his brand new truck of two months, new Ford truck, totaled. Totaled. DTE crews still working to restore power at last check. Uh, more than 400 customers still without power. What a mess, but so thankful it wasn't worth. Those storms last night really came in quickly and got a little chaotic for a few hours. Brett Collar's in for Kim Adams tonight. Brett, those storms intensified really quickly, too. We were watching them as they came in from Lansing. Almost immediately, they were severe, dropping large hail, strong winds. But the strongest that we saw was when that storm moved into Monroe County and touched that tornado down. This was the view of exact track 40 radar at 616 PM. And you can very clearly see the hook echo here on radar, not only on reflectivity, but when you look with inside the storm, we look at the winds and how they're moving within the storm. And clearly you can see these reds and these greens coming together indicative of that tight rotation. And that's when the warning was issued. And sure enough, an EF1 touched down. This is the view a little bit closer as we get closer to the shoreline here. Not far from the Detroit Beach neighborhood, Dixie Highway is right here. That's where the tornado touched down. It was on the ground for about nine minutes, moving off to the east and northeast before lifting. It was an EF1, 90 mile per hour winds, and it was on the ground for nearly five miles. And again, it did cause some damage, but luckily no injuries and no fatalities. Now for us, things look a lot better this weekend and temperatures are on their way up. We'll talk about that coming up in just a bit. In the meantime, if you do have plans this Father's Day weekend, download that forward weather app and get the latest hour by hour if you have any plans for dad.